All right, so I want to talk about the games that I played in 2023 because, to be honest, this was one of the best years in my lifetime for gaming. The only other time I could think of a better time for gaming was back in 2009, I believe it was, 2008, 2009, when we got Modern Warfare 2, we got Wrath of the Lich King of World of Warcraft. It was just that year, for whatever reason, sticks so fondly in my mind. It's hard to think of any year better than that, but 2023 was pretty freaking awesome for games. And I played a ton of games. I honestly didn't have enough time to play all the games I wanted to play that came out. I started playing some of those this year, so I don't really count them as last year. So let's just start off with what I played at the beginning of the year. Obviously played Hogwarts Legacy. Big Harry Potter fan. I don't have the stuff in here, but I have all the Harry Potter movies in their most rarest collection collector's versions, if that, make, if that makes sense. But I had like the box sets that are super rare and you can't find them that much. Anyway, I love Harry Potter. I put over 40 hours into Hogwarts Legacy. I was a little disappointed in the game overall, only because it felt like they didn't have any plans beyond release, right? They had that and then they had Quidditch, which that was not included in the game, which kind of hurt me because I was like, man, that would have been cool to like experience Quidditch you know, in the game, you know, instead of having to wait for it to come out and like some weird multiplayer thing that's still not out a year later, which is kind of crazy. And they've got some sort of thing set up this year to talk about future content they're going to release finally, which is great, but it's 2024. I mean, we've gotten zero communication with them since the game came out last January, February, I think it was. Anyway, it came out a while ago and we have nothing. So, I mean, I like the game. It was a little boring. It... It was amazing for the Harry Potter world. Absolutely loved it. Fantastic for that. But it sucked at being an RPG. There was a lot of things in that game that didn't work very well. Like the choice system sucked. I didn't like that. The just overall RPG-ness. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, basically. Because you know what an RPG is supposed to feel like. And that game did not feel like an RPG to me at times. So that kind of sucked in a sense. So then after that, I played Resident Evil 4 Remake. I'm a massive Resident Evil 4 fan. I'm a massive Resident Evil fan in general. So naturally, I was going to play Resident Evil 4 Remake the moment it came out. And I did. <laughs> I played a ton of it. I put only 46 hours into it because, really, I played the game before. Even though, yes, this was a brand new version of it, the bones of the story were the same. But I beat the crap out of the game. I loved it. I thought it was Gorgeous. I thought they did an amazing job remastering this game and also just remaking the game. They've done, uh, Capcom has done such a fantastic job with the remake so far. They've made them feel so fresh and new from Resident Evil 2 Remake to Resident Evil 3 Remake, even though that one was a little bit more controversial. They did such a fantastic job with all the remakes so far, and Resident Evil 4 was definitely no small task because that game, everybody was like, Capcom. Whatever you do, do not touch Resident Evil 4. <laughs> but they did, and it was probably the best decision they've ever made because that game was absolutely fantastic, and I love playing it even today. I've been playing it off and on throughout the whole year, going back, and I've beaten it like three or four times now. I mean, I sped through a couple of them, just to, that's why the lower time. So I played Resident Evil 4. Sleeper game for me that I was not expecting to play at all, but I put in probably the second most, if not, no, actually the second most amount of hours into, which is a little roguelike called Halls of Torment. If you have not played that game and you're a roguelike fan, you are missing out. That is one of the most fantastic games to come out this year. It is so simple, it is so small, but yet it has so much depth and it is so addictingly fun. And if you have a Steam Deck like this, Oh my goodness, it runs fantastic on the Steam Deck, obviously because it's a lightweight game. Or if you want to play it in between matches on Escape from Tarkov or something, go ahead. Because it's freaking fun, man. I enjoy that game so much. It's been fun. I put 87 hours into it. And it's just fun. If, Like I said, if you love games that are horde survival games where you're like trying to survive against all these different entities coming at you, like thousands of enemies on screen, you're getting all these crazy abilities, you're like building these amazing characters to survive these rounds. That's, a, that's one of the best games out there right now for it. Now I've played Vampire Survivor, as well as now as Death Must Die, I played that as well. And honestly, Halls of Torment is still the better of all of them. It's so freaking fantastic, I can't even, I can't even describe it, it's such a great game. So I played about 87 hours of that. Also, I replayed because my PC was down for a while while I was moving. I ended up replaying uh, Fallout New Vegas for the 
10th or 11th time. I don't know. I played that on the Steam Deck. Absolutely fantastic. It's one of the first games that I've played all the way through to completion on the Steam Deck this year. And I loved it. I, I can't say enough about Fallout New Vegas. I'm not going to go on about it because it's been out since 2009 or so-ish. So it's been out for a long time. But it, God, that game is still fantastic. One of my favorite games of all time. So I played that. One of the games I played uh, in the summer when it came out was my first ever game like this was Diablo 4. Absolutely love the game. I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people are bored with it. Whatever, it's season three now. I'm playing season three right now. It's been actually fun for me. I know that I'm in the minority. And I get it. For people who love the genre, yes. Is this game the best? Probably not. PoE or Path of Exile is definitely way far and beyond the better version of every type of Diablo game. Everybody says, I get it. But I love it. I'm a casual fan of this genre, so I'm just... Loving playing it at my own pace. I'm not blasting through it. I mean, I got my last season was the first season I've ever had a level 100 character. So that was fun. I did that. And now I'm trying to get another one uh, this season because it's actually pretty fun. Um, I put about 120 hours into this. I love Diablo 4. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, is it perfect? No. Is it kind of boring at times? Yes, because you're kind of doing the same monotonous tasks. But when they increase the level, Spe leveling speed that immediately made the game way better and I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I was uh, Around the first time it came out Then I also play Starfield put about 53 hours into it Honestly the most disappointing Bethesda game I've ever played. I liked it But it's so linear and the choices really don't matter that it just Wasn't the game for me and I didn't like it. So it's just I mean I hate it I gave it a positive review on Steam Steam overall because I love lot right reviews after I play a game um, But I gave it like a 7 out of 10 Which yeah, it's high for a game. It's not bad, but for a Bethesda game It's really not that great, which is frustrating and I don't like that So I was I was really disappointed with Starfield. It had so much hype behind it I think they went too big they should have done what what uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 did back in the day where they had like three or four planets that you just explored, right? No, they weren't big because this was an original Xbox game for crying out loud. It, of course, it wasn't very big, but I love that idea because the way I'm looking at it is if they went all in super hard on like seven or eight planets, just make them as depth, like as much depth as possible on these planets and really went all out, it would have been a much better game. But having thousands of planets that you just walk around on and there's nothing, boring. Then all the faction quests, most of them are really fun and cool. But in the grand scheme of it, by you get to the, when you get to the end, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. <laughs> I didn't really care about any of the stories or anything. I'm going on for a while about Starfield. But anyways, put about 53 hours into that. Then I played for the first time. I know this is not a 2023 game, but I played for the first time uh, Spider-Man Remaster from the PlayStation 4, basically. It's been a long out for a while, but it's fairly new on PC, so I played that for the first time. Put 25 hours into it, beat the main story, got all the collectibles. It's tons of fun. Played it mostly on the Steam Deck, also. Worked really well on the Steam Deck. I was actually surprised about that. Fantastic game. Looks beautiful. Runs well on both the PC and the Steam Deck. Very well optimized. Loved it. And I just like the story. It was great. I had a great time playing. It's one of my favorite games of this year that I played, even though, yes, it's not a 2023 game. I played the new DMZ mode or the old DMZ mode <laughs> for Call of Duty a lot. I put about 61 hours into that. Um, I'm pretty sure they've abandoned it at this point. I didn't look that up before this video, but I think they abandoned it. So it really doesn't matter anymore. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm a big Escape from, Escape from Tarkov fan, so I've played that game a lot, put over a thousand hours into the game. Um, I love that game. And DMZ was kind of like a nice change of pace. It didn't feel like it was as high risk, high reward as Escape from Tarkov. So I did like it. I'm sad that they're not continuing on coverage of that, but it is what it is. Also, I beat Mass Effect 1 on the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Again, put about 40 hours into that. That was a lot of fun. I always love Mass Effect. My favorite gaming franchise of all time. That trilogy is a masterpiece. I can go on about that for an hour, but I did beat the original Mass Effect. Again, when my PC was down, I played that on the Steam Deck. Completed another playthrough of that. And also, I played a game toward the end of the year that I ended up carrying into this year that I've been obsessed with, is Remnant 2. That is absolutely a fantastic game. If you have not played Remnant 2, it is Souls with guns. That's what everybody says. Dark Souls with guns. I think that's a little bit of an oversimplification. It's kind of like Dark Souls, but not really. It's a little bit easier than 
Elden Ring and Dark Souls, in my opinion. But at the same time, it's still got that challenge where you fight these big bosses. They require certain mechanics and they change and you can go through a s different builds and try to beat them in different ways. So, yeah, there is that. So, I mean, like, it's got that element to it. I love it. It's got so much more depth than you would ever think. It's just constantly like me and my friend are just constantly playing it and finding new and new and more and more and more things to do. And it's just addicting it's an addicting game loop so we love the game and uh, it's absolutely fantastic and i hope they release more dlc for that because the last dlc was really good honorable mentions i'm just going to mention these because i wanted to these are games that are always installed on my pc and i always play throughout the year and i absolutely love because they're good like i don't know what to play but i'm gonna play these games so if you've never played them before these are going to be on your radar to play um rts games always on my pc is going to be here's my magic 3 here's my magic 5 both fantastic games Rome Total War, uh, Stronghold Crusader, and then one game that I rebeat this year, which is absolutely fantastic. Love this game is Resident Evil 7. Again, big Resident Evil fan. I love playing through it again. Resident Evil 7 is next to Resident Evil 4 and 2 Remake are probably my favorite games of all time in the Resident Evil franchise. So definitely recommend playing Resident Evil 7 if you have not. And yeah, that's pretty much the full context around my 2023 in terms of gaming.